Well, there's an old Oklahoma saying that says, pray for rain and don't complain when it's muddy. But Sergio, there's a lot of issues that can happen when it comes to septic systems when, when there's flooding issues. Yes, um, from, from um, flooding that can lead to uh, water getting into the septic tank or just plainly failure of your septic system altogether. So let's kind of like walk through, you know, there, I, from the last time we spoke, there's, there, you were talking about there's two different types of, two popular types of septic systems in the state, right. um, aer aerobic and conventional. So let's right. start with conventional. What's some issues that can come with that? Okay, so for conventional system, everything moves by gravity, doesn't run on ele electricity. But what you have there is that wastewater is actually disposed in the subsurface. So now if you have too much rain, and you have flooding on top of the area where water is applied in the subsurface, that water could percolate into where we dispose of the water. And if there's too much water outside of the pipe, then water could actually go into the septic tank. And instead of water coming out of the septic tank, now water that goes into it kind of just go in it. So it backs, it backs up into the house, that's one. So, you know, in, in, in another system, the aerobics is becoming more popular, but flooding can just cause a completely different issue for that. Yeah, uh, the aerobic, treat, uh, aerobic treatment units or systems, uh, what it is is that, you know, you have a spray head and everything, the wastewater that is partially treated is actually applied in the surface. And because it's pumped, it means that it runs on electricity. So if that area is flooded, a number one is that you have a control panel outside that has electrical components in it electricity, water, they don't get along. So that means you have to turn off your system when it, the area is flooded. Secondly, if the area has, you know, standing water on it, well, you cannot spray stuff on it because you're just gonna be polluting the water. So that's, that's, that's another thing. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of things that you need to be doing, but across these two systems, first thing is that if you have a basement, make sure that you check your basements, you know, plug the drains in your basement because uh, if water actually tends to go in your house, they're gonna flood the basement first. Second is that we have to minimize water use. We don't know how, how long the flood is gonna last. So might as well be on the safe side and just minimize, minimize, minimize water use. And if there's flooding, specifically if you have aerobic treatment units, it would be prudent uh, to turn the power off, uh, particularly in the, in, the, in the area of your house that, that feeds electricity to the aerobic treatment units. You know, eventually it, the, what, it's gonna dry out, you know, maybe, hopefully it's gonna start to dry out. Uh, yeah. Who knows, it's Oklahoma. But um, what are some things after the, after the, situa the flooding situation in people's backyards are, are gone, what are some things that they need to do af going forward with that? Okay, so the first thing is that, you know, even if the water has already receded, it's, you can see it standing on the surface, you know, the owner still has to minimize water use in the next couple of days, maybe. Uh, why? Because the water might be out of the surface, but the subsurface may still be saturated. So the, the subsurface still cannot, you know, accommodate additional water that needs to be treated. Um, second is that they have to go in there, you know, be, just be careful, uh, make sure that the power is turned off, and then inspect what, what they can see in there, whether there's some erosion problems, whether there's a sign that uh, uh, there's uh, corrosion, for example, in the electrical panels, uh, observe those, because um, the next thing that they're gonna do is to call a professional. And, and third, um, if water really went into the house, well, would they need to, if they need to, uh, uh, need the service of a professional. Uh, to clean that because um, sewage is, is, a, is, is hazardous material and needs somebody who knows how to deal with it uh, to clean up that material. So I have a fact sheet, uh, the title is, you know, what to do, septic systems, what to do after severe weather. So in there are a list of things that uh, the homeowner has to, to, to really take, in, take note of and uh, suggestions of what to do to take care of your uh, septic system during the flood and after the flood. Alrighty, thanks Sergio. Sergio Abbott, septic system specialist here at Oklahoma State University. And if you'd like a link to the fact sheet he talked about, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.